This is Bridget from the DeVay Homestead. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a traditional hurdle stitch. I have other videos. I have this video for what I called a hurdle stitch hat, but technically this is not the hurdle stitch. I have never um, needle knitted. I think I did when I was like seven or eight, but I don't remember and I certainly didn't have a pattern. So when I saw the pattern on the hurdle stitch and I tried to do it on loom knitting, I didn't realize I was reading the pattern wrong. But what I came up with was this really, really cool pattern, super popular, and I really love it. But then I decided, well, let's go back and do the traditional hurdle stitch. It's a little bit different. So it looks a little different. Let's compare the two. So as you can see in the traditional one, you get more of this ridge right here that sticks up as opposed to this one. Both of them are super pretty. But today I'm going to show you the traditional and I'm going to show it to you with two different brims. I really like both of them. I like this brim because it matches the ribbing throughout the hat. And I like this brim because it kind of matches the little ridges that stick up. So I thought I would show you both in one video since the body is the same. So for this one, I'm going to really quick show you what it looks like with a variegated yarn. So it also is a super pretty pattern, whether it's on a solid yarn or a variegated yarn. And I'll show you another one. These are some from the ones I'm making for our troops to be sent to Operation Gratitude, the camo ones. And these are some that I made for our chemo caps to go to our local cancer center. So I would encourage you to make hats to donate to your favorite charity. But today I'm going to show you this traditional hurdle stitch, so let's get started. To begin our hat, we're going to start with our cast on. I'm going to make a slip knot and I'm going to place that slip knot onto the anchor peg and secure. Today I'm using a double E wrap method of cast on. If you would like a different method, you can use that as well. To do the double E wrap method for our cast on, we're going to take our working yarn and we are going to go behind peg one, wrap it twice knit off and then gently pull our working yarn. So behind the peg we're going to wrap it one time, two times, oops, and then knit off. So continue on all the way around for your cast on and meet me back here and then we'll begin the brim of the hat. Once we're finished our cast on, we're ready to start the brim of the hat. Today we are going to be using a knit one, purl one, repeat all the way around, and we're going to do that for six rows. You can make your brim shorter or longer if you would like. To do our rib stitch, which is our knit one, purl one rib stitch, we're going to be using the E-wrap version of the knit stitch. We're going to take our working yarn. We're going to e-wrap the peg, and then the next peg we're going to purl. And I'll show you this slowly in a second. I like to leave my knit stitches on the peg. That way I know where I'm at in my stitches, and it's just a lot faster for me. Then when I finish row number one, I'll come back and knit off any of the pegs that have two loops. So knit one, purl one, knit one, and to do our purl stitch, we're going to take our hook underneath the loop that is on the peg. We're going to go over the working yarn and scoop it up. Take the old loop off the peg, put the new loop on, and gently pull our working yarn. And we're just going to keep repeating our knit one, purl one around for six rows and then we'll start the body of the hat. So go ahead and finish that and then meet me up back here. And now that I've started my first row, I can take my, my beginning yarn off my anchor peg and move it to the inside of my loom. And we will weave that in when we are finished the hat. I'm 
I'm just finished up the six rows for the brim of my hat and now I'm ready to do the body. I'm going to go ahead and push these loops down. And now for the body of the hat, it's going to be a four row repeat. For the first row of our four row repeat, it's going to be a knit row using our e-wrap knit stitch. So we're just going to e-wrap each peg and since we're doing a whole row we can go ahead and wrap a bunch at one time and knit off and we're going to do this all the way around for our first row. I'm just finishing up row one. Now we're ready for row two of our four row repeat. For row two, the row is going to be all purl stitches. So we're going to purl every peg in the row. So go ahead and finish off row two and meet me back here. I just finished up row two. Now for rows three and four, we are going to do a knit one, purl one repeat, just like we did in the brim of the hat. So I'm going to knit one, purl one, and I'm gonna repeat that around for two rows. So go ahead and finish off rows three and four and then meet me back here. I just finished up rows three and four. Now you're going to start over your four row repeat with one row of knit stitches, one row of purl stitches, and then two rows of a knit one, purl one repeat. And you want to repeat that until you get the length of hat that you desire. Then whenever you get the length of hat you desire, you want to end your last row with an all knit row. And the reason this is, is it's going to make your drawstring bind off look better and it's going to work better. So you don't have to finish the whole pattern. You don't have to finish after row number one, which is a knit row, just wherever you stop, then just add a knit row. So go ahead and finish off your hat to the length that you want and then meet me back here and we will do our drawstring bind off. Once I got to the length that I wanted, which for me was eight rounds, then I finished up with one row of my knit stitch and now we're ready for our drawstring bind off. Once we're finished with our drawstring bind off, now we are going to weave in the tail from the beginning. I'm going to put my starting yarn onto a yarn needle. And then weave it in a little bit away from the edge. And I'm going to secure it with a knot. I go right here and secure it with a knot. And then I'm going to weave in my tail in.
I'm going to cut that off and then turn our hat inside out and we have this gorgeous hurdle stitch hat. I love the texture on this hat. This would look beautiful on a scarf or a blanket. To begin our hat, we're going to first start with our cast on and today I'm using the double e-wrap method. To do the double e-wrap method, I'm going to double wrap and knit off and gently pull each peg. So go ahead and cast on all 36 pegs and meet me back here. Once you've finished your cast on, you're ready for row one. For row one, we are going to do a knit stitch using our E-wrap knit stitch and we're going to knit all the pegs. So to do our E-wrap, we're going to take our working yarn behind the first peg and we're going to wrap it in what looks like a cursive E. And since all the pegs are going to be knit, we can just go ahead and wrap a bunch, whatever feels comfortable, and then just start knitting them off. So go ahead and knit your first row all the way around and then meet me back here for row two. I'm just finishing up row one, which is a knit row, and now we're on to row two. So for row two, before we start, we can go ahead and take our beginning yarn off our anchor peg and pull that to the center of the loom and we'll weave that in at the end of our project. To do our purl stitch, our second row is going to be all purl stitches. To do our purl stitch, we're going to take our hook and we're going to place it underneath the loop that is on the peg. We are going to go over our working yarn and scoop it up. Take the old peg off the loop, put the new loop on, and gently pull. Now we're just going to continue that purl stitch all the way around to the end of the row. So go ahead and finish row two and then meet me back here. So I just completed row two, which was a purl row. So when you do one row of knit followed by one row of purl, that gives us what's called a garter ridge. So I have completed one garter ridge by doing those two rows. For total, for my brim, I want to do four garter ridges, so I'm going to need eight total rows. So you can make your length of your brim shorter or longer, depending on how much you want. So I've done two rows, so I'm going to need six more rows of alternating between a knit row and then a purl row to get my four garter ridges. So go ahead and finish off your brim and then meet me back here and then we'll work on the body of the hat. So I just finished up the eight rows for my brim of my hat and now I'm ready to start the body of the hat. For the body of the hat, it's going to be a four row repeat. So for the first two rows, it's going to be a knit one, and we're going to do the E-wrap version of the knit stitch. And I like to leave my stitches on the pegs, and then when I get to the end of the row, I come back and I knit off the knit stitches, the ones that will have two loops on there. If you feel more comfortable, go ahead and knit those off now. So the next is going to be a purl. So it's going to be a knit one, purl one, repeat all the way around. And we're going to do that repeat around for two rows. So rows one and two of the body of the hat. So go ahead and finish rows one and two and meet me back here. I just finished up row two. Now row three of our four row repeat is going to be a knit row. So we can go ahead and push down all our loops from the row before to give us room to e-wrap. 
and then we can begin our row. So we're going to e-wrap and knit off every peg in row three. I'm just finishing up row three, and now we're ready for row four. So for row four, it's going to be all purl stitches. So for row four, you're going to go ahead and purl every stitch on the row, every peg on the row. So go ahead and finish row four, and then meet me back here. So I'm just finishing up row four of our four row repeat. So now we want to repeat those four rows, which the first two rows are our knit one, purl one, repeat, our third row being our knit stitch, and our fourth row being our purl stitch. So we want to go ahead and repeat that so we get the length of hat that you desire. When you get to the length of hat you desire, or about a quarter of an inch from that length, you want to finish off with one knit stitch. So you don't have to finish the whole row re the whole, the whole four row repeat before you do your knit stitch. Just whenever you get to the length you want, you can stop and then do one row of knit stitches and then meet me back here for our drawstring bind off. I got to the length of hat that I want and then I completed one row of my knit stitch and now I'm ready for my drawstring bind off. Once we finish the drawstring bind off, then we're going to weave in this tail from the beginning. I'm going to weave my tail just a little bit away from the edge. And then I'm going to make a knot to tie it off. So be nice and secure. And then I'm just going to weave in the rest of that tail. Then we turn our hat right side out and there we go. So I did have one little boo-boo when I was making my hat right here. You might can see it, maybe not. I accidentally knit it two rows instead of a knit row, purl row, but that's okay. Besides that, our hat is gorgeous. I love the garter ridge on the edge. This hat would look nice in any color, even a variegated yarn. It would also look cute to do a, one color on the border and another color on the hat. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.